Welcome to my channel once again. And this video was uh, immediately filmed after my um, second MR308 video where I replaced the stock and the grip of the 3R308. Uh, and uh, now I want to take a look at the flash hider and the gas block. Um, I will probably be shooting this rifle suppressed a lot so um, getting um, getting um, a um, adjustable gas block is a top priority. Give me a second, I think I have these these wrenches somewhere else. Yeah, so I have been using this wrench for my my 308 previous, uh, my, my 223 a lot already. And I just realized they put a, they, they are giving us a torque, a torque setting here of eight Newton meters of torque. Let me just grab something. Okay, I want to make sure we're making, we're doing it right. Let me just put this to eight. Okay. It is set to 8 now, and I need an 11. Um, good. An 11, 11, give me a second. Okay, so this is a bit far-fetched. <laughs> I need to get a better adapter for this uh, torque wrench here. So let's try it like this. Since we're unscrewing this, the torque doesn't come into effect. The torquing So the front hand guard should come off now. Hmm. At least that's what I thought. Ah, there we go. I just had to pull a little, a little harder. Okay, so this is the front uh, front hand guard. It is actually pretty light. The real weight is on like below the hand guard, and you can see this is a massive barrel here, and um, it is massive all the way up to the gas block, and behind that, it is a, a just a short little stub to bring it to uh, 13 inches. Okay, let me um. Just put the charging handle back. This makes it a bit easier to remove the gas piston here. This is the short stroke piston. No, this is the short stroke piston, and this is the uh, the rod. Okay. So next step is going to be removing the flash hider and. 
to remove the flash hider, I think I need yep. yep, a 17. I need a 17 wrench. Okay, let me let me just try if I can easily remove this. Otherwise, oh, there we go. This one was pretty. This one was pretty easy. On my MR223, you don't want to know what I had to do to get this off. Okay. Remove this. Um, I, huh. It'd be so nice to see. Like this is a, a, a training round. Like not even a training round. This is a, a, a buffer round or what you call it. I wonder if it is. This is identical to the uh, MR two two three. The um, the thread uh, definitely is. So this is the the muzzle brake that I will be attaching a bit later. It's from a company called uh, Cleric Engineering, and it is compatible with the. Um, the suppressor I'm going to be uh, using. So first of all, I want to remove or s swap out the gas block. Now uh, to do that, I have to punch out these two roll pins. I really, I really hate that kind of work. Okay, getting my lovely pins here. This one. Nope, that's actually too big. I'll go one smaller. Okay, yeah, this one's perfectly fine. Grab a hammer. Okay, so I'm going to be punching out these two pins. I'm going to be attaching this gas block. I'm good. Then I'm going to be putting in these new pins here. Yeah, I don't think they have like a an up and, and a down. They just have a... bolt released okay first ones oh damn it that was a bit tight seems like <laughs> I wasn't only fighting the pin I was also fighting the fit here so I have to punch out the pin no, I have to punch out the punch. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to be using this punch to punch out the punch. Yep. There. There we go. So that was a that was a punch out. Gonna try this punch this time. Hope it's gonna give me some better results. Oh, there we go. Okay, gonna save these. Okay, let's. Oh. Yep, there we go. Slides off. That's pretty neat. So there you go. That is your MR223 gas block. Non-adjustable, obviously. You can see this little hole. The um, 
the relief hole for the uh, for the gas valve, and that's actually the part that is um, that is adjustable in the um, in the adjustable gas block. The adjustable gas block is made by a German um, weapon weapon manufacturer called Burg uh, Waffenburg. And he makes this. He is very renowned for his work on this um, on this rifle, and this is just um, an amazing piece of work here. Okay, I think I got it seated. in here. These are hopefully two rolling pins. Okay. So they go in here. Pretty neat. Yeah, looks like uh, we're in. This uh, cast block has a lot of settings, which is super nice if you want to be uh, fine tuning your uh, your action to uh, the suppressor and the ammunition that you have. Okay, this looks like it's really well centered. Goes in very smoothly. Gonna let me pull this back once more. Okay. Chuck. So nice. This is just so nice. Let's just, I'm just gonna assume this one still fits over. <laughs> Very nice. Won't be needing the, the punches anymore. Oh, fuck.
go. That's eight newton meters. Eight newton meters. Okay, so last step is going to be attaching this very br brilliant muzzle brake. The big issue with this muzzle brake, or the big thing with this muzzle brake, it is designed, it, it is from a company called Cleric Engineering. Uh, I've been in touch with the guy. Uh, he is a very nice guy. I have the same muzzle brake on my MR223. Um, uh, so far, I made good experience with it. Unfortunately, I haven't tried the um, the suppressor attaching option. He is like the dude is a great fan of uh, Aze Ultra um, suppressors from Finland. Um, they make some great stainless steel suppressors, which are um, which can take a lot of shots. Like most of the suppressors you can buy uh, in the consumer market for hunting are aluminium, and um, they are. They are going to get very hot after, depending on your ammunition and uh, on your um, on the the um, cartridge cartridge uh, cartridge cartridge you ch you shoot. Uh, they can get very hot between uh, ten and twenty, maybe thirty shots. And it's time to give them a little time to rest. Um, it's totally different with stainless steel suppressors. Um, the AC Ultra suppressors are commonly rated as um, you can shoot them until they are glowing. So that's kind of what I want to have on a rifle like this if I ever go into some uh, a shooting cinema or something like that. That's shooting cinema is not, it's not a it's not a bad thing. I don't know if you've got this uh, in, in other countries, but we've got it in Germany. You've got like a a screen and you shoot at the screen and um, your, your hits are counted and um, you, you can display all kinds of hunting scenes on this on the on the screen and practice your um, your, your practical shooting on a moving target so yeah um, if you go there uh, it's expensive to hire uh, to um, to rent these places for like an hour and you are gonna want to put a lot of shots out uh, within this hour uh, to make it worth your money and I don't want to be sitting around waiting for my suppressor to cool down. And I definitely want to do this kind of training with my suppressor. So this dude, Cleric Engineering, who designed this uh, muzzle brake, he, um, he's also a fan of this rifle. So he came up um, with muzzle brakes for all kinds of different uh, threadings. You can get a, a um, for all kinds of different threads. But he also came up with one that is specially made for Heklon Koch uh, M15 uh, threadings. And this means that the threading is a bit is a bit further inside the muzzle brake and it's gonna sit on this little uh, recess here. You see the barrel. This part, the part that is a bit, a bit um, slimmer here on the barrel is gonna go inside the muzzle brake, which is a nice detail. I love it when things come together like that. Um, and another thing this muzzle brake includes is the ability to have uh, to reduce muzzle rise upon shooting by having these two holes in the muzzle brake. Can you see that? Um, the trick is that they have to be absolutely positively facing upwards in order to um, give you the right impulse to um, counteract the muzzle rise. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take them this okay screw it, screw it on where's my uh, full range to do? is it a 17 again nope it's not a 17 I think it's a I think it's a 19 I can remember from the last time I tried this okay so what we see now is um hmm we are about yeah like almost 180 degrees too far we want to go 180 degrees back these metric threads work like this one um one twist, one full revolution is one millimeter. 
and um, in the, these muzzle brakes include a bunch of little discs. The thickest one is half a millimeter and this one will set you back half a revolution, like half a turn, like th let's use the word turn. turn. It, it's, this one's gonna set you back half a turn. Then I think it's got two that are, no, it's got one that's like 2.25 uh, this one's 0.25, I think. There's two that are one millimeter and two that are, uh, sorry, this one's 0.5 millimeters. This one, I think, is 0.25. These two are both 0.2 and these two are 0.1 millimeter. So this one's gonna set you back half a turn, quarter of a turn, um, um, a fifth of a turn, and a tenth of a turn. The trick is you want to add the, the right amount so that you can like properly fix this uh, with some force, um, the right amount of force. <laughs> um, I'm just gonna start, I'm gonna get some, um, some, I'm not gonna get some grease up there yet. I'm just gonna try half a turn first. You can see, like, uh, this is now hand tight. Um, it's probably um, it's probably like um, an eighth or a tenth of a revolution back. Now I'm going to try and fasten it and see if we can get this one straight. Uh, this one's clearly not straight yet. Maybe I can twist like a, turn it a bit harder. Okay, I think this one, we're getting there, we're getting there. Give me a second. I'm not doing this for the first time. Full disclosure here. Okay, so what I'm doing now is I'm putting this oh this is a little uh, what you call it bubbly thing <laughs> probably got a better name for that in in English okay so first I want to make sure that my rifle is perfectly straight aligned. Okay, so it looks like this one has to move a tiny bit further. And this is what I want to achieve now. further. I have to take the rifle down for that to get a bit of leverage.
Okay, this looks good. I think I actually went a tiny bit too far. Shouldn't be a big deal since uh, I can move back a tiny bit. Let's try this. <laughs> Let's see if it changes anything. I gotta do this off camera once again. It's actually not off camera, that's funny. It's a great camera angle on the secondary cam there. Let's see. Nope. No effect. Damn it. Seems like I have to really twist it off again and put it back on with just a tiny bit less. Let's see. Hmm. So it seems I actually want to add a 0.1 millimeter. One of these 0.1 millimeter slides here. See how this changes things. <laughs> no chance. Okay, yeah, no, I have to remove this again. There is uh, no chance I'm going to get this to work. Let's see what the point one millimeter. <laughs> uh, this is how far I can get it now. It's <laughs> absolutely futile. <laughs> So we're at 0.6 now. Now I don't think it makes sense to go with half a millimeter here. I think the 0.5 was just great. Um, and I, I think... Let's try this, sorry for the noise. Still going too far. Huh. Okay, two like Tried it again with a little bit less pressure. That is much better. Let's check it out. Okay, we're flush there. Flush there. Okay, I can. I think I can live with that. That's certainly a, a handful of degrees off. But uh, definitely not worth getting a headache. 
Let me try something. I'm gonna. <laughs> I want to try one more thing, <laughs> just uh, as a little service here. Oh, why didn't I find that out before? I think we can all agree uh, the uh, angle is pretty good. I can definitely live with that. Okay, let's collect the leftover spacers here. Might be needing them one day when I change something about this rifle. So the uh, the idea of these um, of this muzzle brake is. That um, AZ Ultra, this um, oh yeah, <laughs> here's the uh, the list of uh, rings that are actually included. The idea is that the company is come in. The company that is making them, the Finnish company AZ Ultra, is uh, offering a range of uh, suppressors which are called, um, which have a, a, a so-called Borlock um, connection system. Um, they sell their own muzzle brakes, of course, but non specifically for the uh, Heklon Koch um, line of um, uh, sporting rifles or hunting rifles. So um, you can get you can get um, muzzle brake adapters for their bore lock system from them directly, um, but I really like the idea to get something custom made for uh, for my particular rifle, uh, especially since uh, this dude has put a lot of thought into these um, uh, muzzle brakes um, and added stuff like um, the the muzzle rise compensation. Like I, I couldn't really test the, mu the muzzle rise compensation on the 223 too much because I I don't think the 223 has a lot of muzzle rays. Okay, let's pray that I can get this thing. Oh yeah, oh thank god. Okay, yeah. It clears the muzzle brake. That is super awesome news. When you, when you order one of these muzzle brakes, make sure you also order this uh, protective, this uh, thread protection, uh, protection cap. Yeah, so I'm, <laughs> I don't have my suppressor yet. That's a big shame. Um, still waiting for that. Um, but um, I can't wait to um, shoot this rifle here suppressed. I am so excited by the setup so far. There we go. Okay. Fix that. So, <laughs> so I think this is there's a there's a marking on the uh, the handguard for uh, normal and suppressed. I think, and I think uh, like this is supposed to be normal. Uh, I think the the, the dude who um, the guy who designed this um, adjustable um, gas block, he was actually. Um, working with these markings here as well. So this one is normal shooting, default setting. And um, if you twist it a little bit like this, this is supposed to be suppressed, I guess. And then there's additional settings for, um, uh, if you're still getting over, um, 
over um, like over pressure on a on a suppressed gun. So uh, what I'm going to be trying is um, putting on the suppressor, putting this on the lowest setting, see if I can get this to, to cycle. And uh, if it cycles, it's all great. If it doesn't cycle, um, it's time to, uh, to change it up or down a little bit. Yep. Good. Okay, thanks very much for watching. Stay tuned for the next video because I am going to take the trigger apart. Ooh.